It's very heavy. I don't know if it's free energy. Uh, I just built it because I found a, a cute little uh, video on YouTube and it said uh, you can power a, a, a bright white lab with a dead battery. I was like, hmm, that's funny because uh, a bright white lab uh, needs about 3 volts, so how can you power it with one dead battery? And actually it was this, oh, it was this uh, schedule that I found on the internet and I built it and yes, it works. Uh, it uses one uh, old battery, and uh, this is a uh, bifilar coil uh, wound on a toroid. Uh, this is an, uh, a resistor, <coughs> this is a transistor, and this whole thing starts resonating according to the, the voltage and the amperage that is flowing through it. And the bright white LED uh, yeah, does its job and it emits light. So I was building it because I had some spare time and it worked, and then I thought. This is funny because it works on the back EMF, but they uh, put it in series with the battery. So I was thinking then they are killing the battery. So I tried it reverse. I just took the LED and put it just over the core. You see this? So once this starts resonating, the transistor opens and closes, and the, the, the amperage goes through the system. But when it closes, you get a back EMF spike in the coil. And that voltage is a lot higher than the voltage over the battery. And you can use it and just power your lab exactly like here. But when I did it like this, the current uh, uh, that, and that I was using from the battery dropped to uh, two-thirds uh, of what I used before. So just one-third of what I used before and it still did the, did the same uh, job. The battery is there. Okay. So then I thought, okay, if this works and if, the, uh, if the, the voltage is higher, how high does it get? So I removed the lamp. I no, I don't want to the board. I removed the lamp and put a, a capacitor in there, and uh, the voltage started rising: 30 volts, 40 volts. Okay, so the voltage spikes that, that come from this. Uh, coil are pretty high with just one and a half volt battery, actually uh, 0 0.9 volts. So that was funny. Okay, go on. So I started looking on the internet, what, what, what exactly happens here, and uh, I found Bedini uh, already mentioned, and uh, Bedini uses just about the same principle, but he also uses uh, uh, magnets to increase the, the field strength in the, in, in the, in the core of the uh, coils. We don't have magnets here, you saw that. But um, he uses an occupank, an occupank and he charges another occupank. And the strange thing is that you cannot use, use it to charge another one and then put the energy directly back in there. That's not possible because there's some kind of, I don't know what, what happens in the system. Yeah. Actually, there's a, a whole video of him and he charges with a pack like this. Mm. Uh, a few batteries and he charges a room full of occup occupants like this and, uh, and you get radiant energy and whatever he calls it so I'm just uh, mentioning some of the things that I found on the internet uh, go and figure it out uh, maybe you can do something with it um, I have a slight uh, technical background I, I, uh, when somebody explains uh, something to me like uh, uh, John just did then uh, well, I tend to immediately understand it, but I haven't studied that deep to know what happens exactly in there. So I can only say, try it and see what happens. Okay, next one. This is uh, the next thing that I did. I took one battery, uh, it was a full battery, uh, a rechargeable battery, and I put it in here. Then I found a whole box of dead batteries, uh, non-rechargeable batteries, rechargeable batteries, um, and they were all completely dead. I couldn't charge them even with chargers, normal chargers. So I was like, let's try it. I saw it on the internet. People started uh, uh, recharging batteries, and I tried it. So I put a, 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 a diode in front of it to get uh, just one-way current, uh, and I put some dead batteries in series. I put everything in series. Mm -hmm. I did this with the neodymium magnets. I, I, it all locked together and uh, put them in, in series. And what I found that I was able to charge batteries with one battery and it 
it, yeah, well, it drains this battery, but very, very, very slowly, and these batteries get charged completely. Even that battery, I couldn't charge them anymore, and it works. And then people say, oh, this can't work. Yeah, then tell me what this is, fork, and then <laughs> it works. I don't know why it works. So it's, it like, works. It's, it's like the one battery is inspiring the other batteries. Yeah, come on, do, do yeah. work. Maybe that's it, I don't know. <laughs> So, but actually, so I was I, I was trying this, and then I, I had some uh, some pen lights, and I put them in a, in a, uh, in a flashlight, and uh, I tried it, and they were lit fully. So I thought, then okay, there is some. Uh, there's not only a, a voltage in there, but there's also power in there. And I measured it, and the, the light used 200 milliamps. And if I charges the uh, charge this. Uh, um, the, the current that I measured here, and it's, it's pulse measuring, so it's not very uh, uh, accurate. But I measured about 20 uh, milliamps, and when I measured the amperage here, I measured like 2 3 milliamps. But still, they were charging, so I really didn't understand what was happening. Okay, Rene, if, if you can charge more batteries, uh, yeah. who are in series, yeah. so that means that you have the, uh, the voltage uh, different in voltage over there, yeah. so you can also exchange the batteries with a, with a, a lamp or something. Uh, no, no, that, that's not it. Uh, you mean like uh, put a lamp in here? Yeah. You can put a, a LED in there, they, they light up, but if you put a lamp in there, then it doesn't work. I tried that also. I tried to... Uh, to then what's the reason? To, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I think it's too high because, as I was telling, there was only two milliamps going through there. But if I if I let it in there for a few hours, somehow the batteries got charged completely. Now, maybe not completely, but they. What? How you determine if the battery is charged? How did I? How do you know the battery is charged? Is it voltage across it or? Yeah, that, at first there was absolutely nothing in there. They lay in a box for three years and they were dead. Then I measured voltage, yep. but voltage doesn't say anything because you can have a voltage but not do any work with it. Yep. Then I left them in there, left it running for some hours, and went downstairs to play with the kid. Went back up, took the batteries out. And use them in a flashlight, and uh, I measured uh, how much uh, amps were uh, were being uh, pulled from the batteries. And it was 200 milliamps, and these batteries were completely dead. I couldn't do anything with them, so I, that was really strange. Then I found in my old multimeter there was a 9 volt battery that was uh, that is a doornail, but it was not rechargeable. I took that one out and put it in series. Also, I was oh, what heck, just try it, and that one charged also. <laughs> And I was like, what the fuck is happening? I'm not going to buy any uh, batteries anymore. <laughs> so I recharged some non-rechargeable batteries, rechargeable batteries that were completely that I couldn't charge them in the charger. They would, would just start blinking red and that was it. And uh, they all came back to life. And this battery didn't die on me. The, the, the voltage dropped, of course, because you do some work, but it was really minimal. So on, on the end, you could exchange a charged uh, battery in, in, in the primer. Uh, uh, yeah, you can. Uh, I, I tried that also. I yeah. put, uh, took one battery out, put it in the first place, and started charging other batteries. So, like, so okay, okay. Then, then my question is, what's the overunit factor of this system? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you should ask him. He can measure it. I can. <laughs> this is well, also a static unit, by the way. <laughs> it's really funny, but I was looking at it because I want to know what was happening, and then I found that the Dini is doing well exactly the same thing because this is also resonating and it's whipping up the, the, the voltage. You get these really high spikes, and somehow that really revives batteries and puts a charge in them. I don't know what it is. I'm just showing you this, and my suggestion is build it and try it. And what what else I found. And this I didn't uh, draw in here, but it's really important, I think, to is the point of free energy. Is these are batteries. Yeah, that works again. These are batteries. And when I put the charge uh, at first uh, on them, uh, they would uh, climb up.